Background information. Before learning about hydrogen fusion, it is important that we know about some key concepts. The first thing we should do is have a basic idea on atoms and their structure. First of all, what are atoms? They are the smallest particles that elements can be broken up into without changing their physical properties. All matter is made up of atoms. So, atoms could be considered as the building blocks of the universe. Now we move on to the structure of the atom. The nucleus is the core of the atom. It contains subatomic particles called protons and neutrons. The plural form of the nucleus is nuclei. For example, you would say one nucleus and two nuclei. Protons are one of the two subatomic particles making up the nucleus. It has a plus one charge. Neutrons are the other type of subatomic particle found in the nucleus. It has a neutral charge. Electrons are subatomic particles which orbit the nucleus. It has a negative one charge. We should also know the definitions of some key terms. Neutrinos are elementary particles that have neutral charge. Their neutral charge makes them extremely unreactive and they will pass through most matter without interacting with them. However, not a lot of information is known about these neutrinos as it does not interact with matter so it is extremely difficult to detect and observe them. Quarks are fundamental particles which make up protons and neutrons. The two most common types of quarks are up quarks with a plus two-thirds charge and down quarks with a minus a third charge. Protons and neutrons are made up of up quarks and down quarks. For example, you can see here that protons are made up of two up quarks and one down quark. And if you add the charges of these quarks together, so plus two thirds, plus two thirds, minus a third, you'll get one. And that is why a proton has a plus one charge. Similarly, you can see that a neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks. And if you add the charges of these quarks together, so two-thirds minus a third minus a third, you get zero. So now you can see why neutrons have zero charge. So we have a little bit more to know. Positrons are subatomic particles, also known as anti-electrons. It is the antiparticle with electrons, meaning that it has the properties of an electron, except for the fact that it is positively charged. Furthermore, when an electron collides with a positron, they will both be annihilated, signifying that they will both be converted to other forms such as gamma rays. This image shows annihilation. Isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element but the different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. Atoms of the same element all have the same number of protons, although it is possible for them to have different numbers of neutrons. For example, these are all isotopes of hydrogen. You can see that they all have one proton, but they have different numbers of neutrons. So, first of all, we have an entire overview of the hydrogen fusion process. To start off, two pairs of nuclei of a hydrogen isotope containing one proton, called protium or hydrogen-1, react to form a hydrogen isotope called deuterium, releasing a positron and a neutrino at the same time. Deuterium is another hydrogen isotope, but with one proton and one neutron, and is sometimes called hydrogen-2, as there are a total of two particles in its nucleus. In the next step, the two deuterium nuclei will each react with another hydrogen 1 nucleus to form an isotope of helium with two protons and one neutron called helium 3. This step also releases waves called gamma rays. The final step consists of two helium 3 nuclei reacting to form a helium 4 nucleus and two hydrogen 1 nuclei. Now we'll go through the three steps in more depth. 
to recap in the first step, two proteum or hydrogen one nuclei, each containing one proton, react, forming a deuterium nucleus or a hydrogen two nucleus with one proton and one neutron. Additionally, this nuclear reaction produces a positron and a neutrino at the same time. Also, note that protium and deuterium are both isotopes of hydrogen. In this nuclear reaction, a process called beta plus decay took place. The reason why a neutron can be formed from two protons is because one of the protons were transmuted or transformed into a neutron. This occurred due to beta plus decay. We can look at beta plus decay in this reaction in two steps. Firstly, the two hydrogen and one nuclei react, forming the nucleus of a diproton, which is a helium isotope with two protons, and gamma rays. Next, beta plus decay occurs. Protons, as mentioned before, has a plus one charge because it is made of, of two up quarks with plus two thirds charge and one down quark with a minus a third charge. During beta plus decay, one of the up quarks changes to a down quark in a process known as weak interaction. The particle now has a neutral charge since there are two down quarks, meaning that two thirds minus a third minus a third is zero. Hence, the charge is zero. This means that the particle will now become a neutron. During weak interaction, a positron and neutrino are also released. So, to recap, during beta plus decay, a proton with two up quarks and one down quark undergoes beta plus decay to produce one neutron with one up quark and two down quarks, a positron, and a neutrino. Going back to the formation of deuterium, the diproton formed in the first reaction is extremely unstable, so it immediately breaks down into a deuterium atom, a positron, and a neutrino through beta plus decay. In comparison to the first step, the remaining part of the hydrogen fusion process is relatively straightforward. In the second stage, the deuterium nucleus with one proton and one neutron, which if you remember correctly was formed in the previous reaction, fuses with a protein nucleus to form a helium-3 nucleus and gamma rays. Gamma rays transport some of the energy away. Helium-3 is an isotope of helium. In the final stage, two helium-3 nuclei that were formed in the second stage react. This produces a helium-4 nucleus and two proteum nuclei. So now you can see how four hydrogen atoms reacted in a series of processes to produce helium-4.